have one. Thanks for watching. This video is about just basic things you need to know about the guitar. There's four areas I'm going to try to cover. First one is the parts of the guitar. So let's do it. I'm going to take this off so I can show you. When you hold the guitar like this, like I'm standing, the guitar is very much like us. There's this top part, which we call our head, or it could be called the headstock. There's this big part down here, which we call our body. And there's this middle part connecting the head to the body that we call our neck. So it's a lot like a person. You have the head, the neck, and the body. These things up here are attached to these called the strings. These are called tuning keys, and we use them to tune the strings of the guitar to sound the pitch we want them to sound. There are six strings on the guitar. There's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They have names. They're musical notes on the piano. E, A, D, G, B, E, or just musical notes in general. They can be written on the music staff, etc. So you have the head, the tuning keys, the six strings on the neck, the body, where the head attaches to the neck. This wonderful piece is so important. It's called the nut. And where the strings attach to the bottom of the guitar down here is called the bridge. Head, tuners, strings on the neck, body, bridge front sides back that's essentially the parts on every guitar the other thing that we have on a guitar that a violin doesn't the very important part actually are these areas that are divided you can see by these wires right here these wires are called fret wires the spaces themselves are called frets this is fret area number one fret number two fret three four five six seven etc all the way up so this is considered to be fret zero or the nut, and that's considered to be fret one. They're basically the parts of the guitar. The second thing I wanna show you how to do is how to hold the guitar. So I'm gonna do it first with a strap because that's, I'm standing up so that you can see, so it's a little easier. Okay, so when you put a strap on a guitar, this is kind of the position you wanna have it in. Um, something like this so that you're comfortable my elbow's comfortable you can see it's not like it's not it's not like this against me it's more pointing out a little bit like that and that's has to do with this arm to make it more um comfortable basically so i'm going to show you real quick sitting down what it should look like too and then I'll come back and show you a couple more things that are basic to playing the guitar. Hopefully this will work. My cameraman will get it right here. Okay, I think you can see pretty good. Okay, so when I sit down, it looks a whole lot like when I was standing up. It's not flat against me like this. It's pointing out. This is over the curves over my right leg. Most people, you know, like to sit pretty square, which if I take the guitar off real quick, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So you're sitting in your chair, your shoulders are kind of square. My legs, my feet are on the ground. They're not, my legs aren't too far apart, but they're not totally together. Um, just, you know, kind of comfortable. Your arms, if you let them straight down, bend them up 90 degrees. This one particularly, go a little past 90 degrees, that's where you want this hand to be. So that's where you're gonna want the neck of the guitar to be. So when you're sitting here, I'm gonna take this. You notice the guitar's pointing out a little bit here. It's not, it's not like this. We don't hold it like that. And you don't hold it like this so that you can see it. It has to be like this, with this curve on your leg. And then you take this arm, bend it 90 degrees, and then a little bit more. Now take the neck of your guitar and put it in your arm. Have this arm here to hold the guitar in that position. And you'll also notice that it's incredibly 
close or maybe even exactly the same as where it was when I was standing up with the strap. So that's pretty much the position to hold your guitar. The other thing that sometimes people will do holding the guitar is they'll put this leg up like this and that raises it up a little bit more and puts it even in more of a exact position of your strap. I don't find it comfortable to cross my legs, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so we went over the parts. We went over how to hold it sitting and strumming, um, sitting and standing. Now I'm going to go over how you strum. Well, strumming on the guitar is when you play more than one of these strings at a time. Most people, when they start out, they like to use their fingers. So I'll just show you with your thumb. You can, you can strum down. You gently glide over the strings. You can use your whole arm. You can use just your wrist. You can use just your thumb. Whatever works for you in the beginning to get you going is how to do it. A lot of people don't like just using their thumb. They try to sort of use their fingertips. That works too. You could use them together. You could use, you know, you could do however it works for you. If the nails are quite a different sound than just the flesh. So, you know, that's something that you want to want to fool around with. You should be able to strum down and up. And also you want to learn how to strum where you're not hitting all the strings all the time. The other thing you want to know how to do is how to pick the strings. Basically, you're going to put your thumb on the string and you're going to push it, your, your thumb towards the floor. That's pretty much how you pick, how you pluck. The less you come away like this, the faster you're going to be able to go like that. So one thing I really like my students to try to learn how to do in the beginning, especially is when you pick a string and there's one that way towards the floor, you let your thumb rest on it so that it's your thumb sort of figuring out where it is. And you want to try to do that on every string. This is all with your thumb. There's more advanced things. You can apply all this to your fingers. You can do different fingers for different strings and you can, but that's more advanced. Just with your thumb, you have strumming and you have plucking. fingers on them are E, A, D, G, B, and E. E, A, D, G, B, E. You want to remember that. Now we're going to go into this hand, which our fretting hand. Hopefully you're right-handed looking at this video because I'm not doing it for a left-handed person. Uh, that's a whole nother topic. Uh, most guitars that are built are built for right-handed people. So even lefties a lot of times learn how to play a right-handed guitar. Okay, so the fret in hand. Our thumb isn't used very often, maybe later when you're a bit more advanced. So your fingers are used. This is called your first finger, second finger, third finger, and your pinky's your fourth finger. Your fingers are responsible for changing these open strings by holding down different frets on the string. So how your fingers are supposed to look is like this. I'm going to stand up to show you so that you can actually see it better. So let me move my camera back. Try to figure out how to do this. I'm going to move this chair out of my way. It's good that wasn't my uh, really good guitar there. Okay. So anyway, finger one is usually responsible for fret number one and finger two is usually responsible for fret number two and finger three for fret number three and if you could use your pinky fret number four we're going to leave the pinky out for right now first of all your hand goes sort of like this on the neck notice my wrist is pretty straight my thumb is on the back of the neck 
kind of like I'm sort of, you know, trying to put my thumbprint on the back of the neck. My hand is like I'm holding a baseball bat or about ready to grip something. When you put your fingers into the fret spaces, you want your finger to bend, to bend like a candy cane, and then you use the tip of your finger. So we're gonna to try to learn how to do that with finger one, two, and three on the very first string. When you put your finger in a fret, it's really nice if you can get it closer to this fret wire for two reasons. One reason is it's, you don't have to press down as hard to get the note. The second reason is it gives you the truest pitch. In other words, sometimes if you play, they might sound a little bit different. This is when you're playing one note at a time too. So the very first thing you wanna learn how to do is play finger one, and then finger two, and then finger three. And you wanna be able to press down each one of those fingers on each and every string. Now, as you do it, your thumb is allowed to move. You'll notice my thumb's all the way up there and my hand's touching the bottom of the guitar. But my fingers, I'm still trying to curve to use my fingertips as much as possible. So let me walk, I'm gonna go this way for you. I'm gonna do it fast. And I even messed it up, but I want you to notice where my thumb is now. It's no longer all the way up here, it's there. Point of this is your thumb is allowed to move up and down this way and up and down this way. If you do the same exercise up here, So it moves, it goes with your hand, up and down, this way and this way. You really don't have to press on your thumb as hard as you think you do, but in the beginning, you're gonna be pretty much squeezing. When you hold chords, you usually have to hold down more than two fingers or one finger at a time. It gets trickier, but the curving part is still super duper important. Fingertips curving over the strings so that they don't touch the other string. Try to keep your wrist as straight as you can to relax the tendons across the back of your hand. It's not always possible, especially if you're doing things like this. Curve your fingers. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Have a great day.